up, everybody? It's DJ Ash, a.k.a. Ash Astonish, a.k.a. Ash McCormick, and welcome to another episode of the newly rebooted Bars, the B-Side album review show where we go in-depth into the newest independent albums hitting the music scene. If you haven't tuned into this show before, this is a new show on the B-Side channel giving independent artists a platform to share their music and give us some insight on their journey creating their newest project. So make sure you follow us on all social media platforms to stay up to date with the best independent artists out there. And we'll put up the socials so that you can get your phone out and give them a follow if you haven't already. As always, you can follow me at What's Up Ash on Instagram and Twitch. And you can find me at Ash Astonish on Twitter. So today, I am super excited because we have a special guest that I am honored to have on this show. Yeah. An artist known by just as many names as me, if not more. All the way from Texarkana, Texas, yeah, yeah. Big Money Nova God. Thank hey, you man. so much for coming yes. on the show today. Appreciate you for having me, man. Thank you. You went through the fucking rain and sleet snow, and snow everything. to be here. We and you are here. Some ice rocks. It was <laughs> crazy. We made it. Risked your life. And now we get to talk about your album that you just put out. Yes. Um, and I'm excited to have you here to talk about your latest project because I personally have been waiting a very long time to hear it. Yeah. Uh, so it's awesome to have it come full circle and have you talk about it on the show. Um, so it just dropped last week, and mm -hmm. it's entitled America's Nephew. Yes. And so to start, because we have a lot to go over, uh, it's a packed 15-track album. Mm. Uh, but l first, let's stop and let's talk about the cover art, because oh. this shit is so dope. What can you tell us about the cover art? Man, so of course, you know, I look at myself as an alchemist, so I got me coming out the little genie bottle yeah. and my own America who passed away in 2006. I have her sitting there like shocked, like, and in her favorite hoodie with the America, with the, uh, what is it, no, Roman characters. The and, Roman numerals. Yeah, and uh, and it's so beautiful because I made the, the sky and everything look all trippy. Yeah, like, yeah. Make it feel real psychedelic. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it could, and I'm uh, not gonna give too much away, but there's a little bit of that vibe on the album. Yeah. Um, who did the artwork? Um, it was done by Cortez, art by Cortez. He's Cortez. He, done, he did a lot of work for Soldier Boy and a lot of artists who like that cartoonish yeah. 3D feel. I think he did like eight projects for uh, Soldier Boy. So, you know, he's good. Like, yeah. I love this. I, yeah, I loved it. Like, as I love, I love animation. Yeah. And Man, it's, it's it awesome. Even, I didn't even have to do one, two, three, four, yeah. five. Yeah, no, and it's, it's so <laughs> clean. It just, it fits, it fits so perfect with the vibe. Um, so start off strong with track one gates of heaven Man. um which really starts off really ethereal mm -hmm. and we hear you playing with some really nice vocal filters yeah. and i thought this was a really great opening track because it starts off with so these you know great vocal crescendos yeah. um what was the production process like for this track um so when we were searching for beats for this uh, did this song with my aunt heaven and uh we have an interesting age gap. We're only six months apart. Oh, shit. And uh, so I would say, like, of all my uh, family members who are close in age with me, me and her are the closest. And we didn't take long to find the beat. Yeah. And when we were uh, flipping through them, we knew exactly how we wanted it to feel. We wanted it to give people that, um, oh, this is just the beginning kind of feel yeah. we wanted yeah. it to build up i didn't want it to hit too hard i didn't want like mad club drums yeah like, like even though this is america's nephew and everybody expected it to be turned up mm -hmm. i wanted it to have that i'm giving you a hug kind yeah. of yeah like it's hey, very welcome. warm and welcoming like hey, welcome hey, to yeah so you know <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the album to <laughs> yeah it, it like i kind of thought of like uh like mac miller's like divine feminine where it yes. has that like very operatic oh, opening like uh, the curtains are opening <laughs> and you're about to witness the masterpiece for that project. yeah it was uh beautiful um but so well uh, one thing that i just picked out uh you repeating the track now this is my time or now is my time this is my chance which kind of feels like you are metaphorically and probably physically rising up and being like this is my thing yeah like, like i like i run this this is my time to I shine waited long enough yeah exactly like, like my time has come <laughs> like and, and, y'all ready for me yeah right? i thought it was a, a really powerful statement like executed in a very beautifully musical way yeah um it's also interesting because it's one of the shorter tracks on the album you get right right into it and you kind of pass it off to the feature yeah. and you keep the refrain mm -hmm. which is an interesting choice especially for the opening track because you just kind of give us a taste and then you you pass it off yeah. i um, wanted her to be able to give them 
you know, because that was her first, this, this is like her first like professional track. So yeah. I wanted her to be able to give them something that they weren't expecting. Yeah. And they thought it would be me, but not nah, yeah. something that's a piece of me. Yeah. So what was the verse always a feature or was that like a later choice? Like, did you like, how, uh, how did that? Well, when I, I knew when. I went to Texarkana because I was born in Los Angeles, spent most of my life in L.A., Kansas, Louisiana, Arkansas. I was everywhere. Um, but um, when I went to Texarkana to work on the project, I knew that I wanted her on a lot of tracks. But I didn't know if it was going to be the intro. Like right. we, had a, we had a lot of songs that oh, were yeah. going to be number one. But mm -hmm. when I was doing, <clears throat> as I call them, like tech taste testers for right. my family and friends they would always be like yo this is this is yeah. the one, this is what you're opening it with yeah and i'm like oh, okay yeah <laughs> i guess this is the first track yeah now, it kind of gravitated to that yeah that's cool um so we hop over that track and into f dot saint oh uh now it. in f dot saint we kind of get deeper into the storytelling of the album yeah. and you start off the track by stating that you, you've been working on this project for like three years yeah. and you scrubbed everything and you restarted and now you're here. Yeah. Uh, so this album has been through a lot of revisions and changes. And I personally know that you've been working on this project for a long time. Yeah. I've heard some of those, the early demos off this. Yeah. Uh, when I first listened through it, there were a few songs I recognized that you, know, you were working on for, during your first album. Um, and I could definitely hear the fresh coat of paint that you put on them yeah. you know uh there were also a lot of new songs that i'd never heard before yeah. uh which was a treat because i could really hear the work that you put in and listening from the very beginning of those tracks to the final project yeah. um so what was the journey that you went on during those three years of making the album and why did you eventually wind up scrubbing so much of it and then restarting essentially um for me the journey was finding the right engineer to mix and master it <clears throat> and make it uh feel right yeah it wasn't about how it sounded it had to feel good to me when right. i played it no matter if the speaker was crappy if it was some good headphones bad headphones i needed it to sound good in all of them mm -hmm. and it seemed like i was butting heads with um a lot of uh engineers that i didn't know yeah so then i was like maybe i need to work with someone that i know yeah and then it was it wasn't there Mm -hmm. and then and it just didn't click one day you you invited me down uh to the event that you do on sundays in venice, venice beach yeah i was leaving there and bumped into someone who had booked me for an event her name is ro ro way uh she uh booked me for an event in vegas and uh i just asked her i was like yeah. hey do you know an engineer <laughs> and she's like yeah her name is baby goat she's in vegas and i was like I'm oh going shit to vegas. yeah <laughs> yeah like and for my birthday i booked you know a bunch of hours like i booked like four sessions with her like <laughs> that's great you so you was, that happened because of venice yes that's crazy like, if you Dang. had never told me to come out there i wouldn't have saw them they wouldn't have introduced me they gave me her instagram everything i hit her up i was like okay she i went and listened to everything that was on her instagram like to wow listen to the quality and i was like yeah this is wow this is are you hearing this this is epic like this is crazy <laughs> like, I, I this is blowing my and, mind and right now she ran through the track she didn't care that i, I like moving working fast yeah they sounded good and she worked so fast and it's like she's listening to stuff that you're not listening to and yeah she was pulling yeah. out the song like I, if i felt good every time i left that's and that never has happened <laughs> wow that's awesome so it just it just everything. kate literally came together super like, organically I, I knew like okay we're, we're gonna do this right yeah so I, I had a month and a half before my birthday was coming up so that month and a half i just went through listening to everything that i had done over the past three years and most of them got scrapped yeah and songs that i had only had a piece of but i loved the beat yeah they're on america's nephew and i rehearsed them for that month and a half like i was doing shows yeah and it shows <laughs> <laughs> and then when i went to record she's like oh this is okay you're you're for real you're serious yeah, yeah. i was like this is my time hey this is my chance <laughs> uh so the beginning of the track uh starts off with some ambient harmonies mm. and underneath your prefacing monologue but then we kind of get into the rhythmic rapping that you execute so well over the jazzy like chill beat um and i really love the bass line that comes in oh. like that 
that sh just pops. Uh, it's just every so often and so subtle, but so perfect. Uh, and then the percussion that really carries the track, like the congos and the your 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 the great job with that beat. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, but and it just it like it just really carries the whole track. And I really love how uh, this beat builds very gradually. Uh, and then of course there's a clever wordplay that you're known for, like the the love don't cost a thing reference Come on, with man. the the Shima anime. You want to eat all that cake? <laughs> Come on. Uh, and of course the repeating line of the chorus. Uh, so can you take us through the process of creating this track and how did you form the hook and then develop the delivery over the musicality of the beat? Um, so um, what's interesting is Jay Silva, who made the beat, is my uncle. Okay. Um, when I went to Vegas, after all, of, you know, yeah. like it's he's he's playing a whole bunch of beats for me and I asked him, Play me beats that you love that nobody could do nothing with. Mm. And when he played that one, <clears throat> I knew, like, this is, I can, f I, I didn't know what the words were, and I didn't want to record nothing there. I wanted yeah. to go home and record them. And I purposely didn't play the instrumentals until I got home. And when it came on, instead of words, what I said, like, I, what y'all hear mm. is, what happened when I press record? Yeah, like just one take. Yeah, I I didn't I knew what it felt like. I had played the instrumental a few times before I went and press record, but I didn't write nothing down. Right. And I was like, uh, and I I like took a deep breath and I said, man, I've been working on this project for like three years. Mm -hmm. I scrubbed everything. We started. Now we're here. And then when the beat dropped, I was like, boom, I'm going to give you that good coke feeling. Like, I knew what I wanted to give them. Yeah. Like, so as I uh, played it back and I'm typing out, I'm listening to it and I'm typing out what I was saying, I was like, Did I, I'm listening to myself when I said, I got young niggas that are blasphemy. Yeah. I'm saying, pow, like blasphemy. You a swear to God, which is what? Blasphemy. Like, and he like, don't ask for me. Like, come <laughs> on. When I heard it, I said, I said, what? <laughs> like, this is beautiful. Like, I'm glad that I didn't just get on this beat and do what I normally do. Yeah. I meditated before I got on it. And I just, I, the house was empty. It was quiet. It was a very, like, surreal moment. Like, right. And I did, like, three songs a day. I didn't I didn't allow myself to do no freestyling. I wasn't mm -hmm. giving away free bars. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I listened to the instrumental. I would give myself a title and I would tell myself how I wanted it to feel. And that one, it was the first one that I, I couldn't get it out of my head. <laughs> yeah, and just like your your syncopation over the beat is just like it it pops. I was just so impressed. Uh what's the story on the title? What what uh, is F dot Saint? So Throughout the song, me and my wife, we started watching um, Snowfall, and, and I hadn't, she, she's recently got me into, like, binge-watching shows. If you <laughs> watch it and you like it, finish it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, like, we had been watching that show, and I think my favorite episode was when um, his friend was, like, messing up and doing all the wrong stuff, and he's like, dry, motherfucker. Like, you you know, like, you just do, what, just do your job, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, and that's how I felt about myself. Mm. Like, just drive. Like, yeah. So me thinking about Franklin mm -hmm. and knowing you got to, you, you can't slack. So if, when I hear that song, I think of that show. So mm. I thought if I put this song out and it makes me feel this way, season three, they going to want this song on there. Yeah. They, so, yeah, Basically, it's good to watch TV because you can make a hit song. You feel me? <laughs> like, I, I used to just want to be, like, reading and listening to instrumentals yeah. all day. It's, I, I mean, that, that's, that's what Basquiat did. <laughs> Basquiat would put on, you know, the radio, the TV, the, the newspaper, the magazines, the books he was reading all out, and he would pull inspiration from all these different Man. places. And that's, that's how you make art. Art is inspired by other pieces of art. Man, and, the, and I think the, the coolest thing is knowing that if she hadn't made me watch the show, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have finished the project. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
like you said, it all came together super. Organic. Everything yeah. happened for a reason, Perfect. and now we're here. You feel, oh, come <laughs> on, yes. <laughs> and now we're here to track three, uh, kind of a god, yeah. an interlude. So this track is largely a recording of someone who's listed on the album as Hip Hop Lou. Yeah. Uh, over at the church organ. Yeah, she's from Las Vegas. Yeah. Shout out to Hip Hop Lou. Uh, and then uh, there's this sample book and en- book ending the track. Yeah. Uh, so it really feels like a sermon. Yeah. And it's basically oh, commenting wow. on the preceding track, Hundred Bones, Co- which we'll and, get to. And I made uh, that beat. Yes. For, for uh, kind of a god. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the beat was made before I thought to put Lou. Ah. Oh. It was going to be a poem on there originally. Oh, that's interesting. Like I, I remember hearing the um, Earth Gang and uh, Jid song "Meditate." Yeah. And when it got to the we looking for peace in America. I said, that's what I'm I'm looking for. Oh, shit. I said in my projects, America's nephew, I was going to do a bunch of, uh, I was going to go and find a bunch of songs that said America. If any song that yeah. said America that I've been listening to lately. Yeah. But none, that didn't happen. I ended up just using that one. I had a producer named Guy Gabe. Uh, I was like, I need you to make it slow down. And, you know, I needed to have a, a weird being pulled into a plane kind of so that I can put it on, put it in my computer and make a beat. He's like, yeah. all right. And the organs happen. Then the people singing. And I was like, okay, cool. I want a poem. Mm-hmm. Poem never happened. Hip hop Lou did a review on some of my songs. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she did a few of them, but I was like this right here. Yeah. The world needs to hear what she said. When yeah. she said, he's kind of a God. I said, <laughs> this has to be. The world needs to hear this. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's awesome. It, it worked together super super perfectly, and I'm so glad that you explained that sample because yeah. uh, you segued into that perfectly <laughs> for me. Thank you. Uh, can you talk? So, uh, th- so you decided to use it as an interlude into Hundred Bones, and it's it's pretty cool because it like yeah. basically you hear the track before you hear the track. Yeah, um, she's explaining it. She yeah, and, and that's what I usually do because I feel like that was a freestyle. That, yeah, and I had never heard his song. So that's why people are like, it, it's a whole different vibe from his song. Yeah. So that when I before I play that freestyle for anybody, I literally have to break it down. But she broke it down she in a different down. way yeah. that I have never like. Yeah. Good job. She basically man. like Vanna Whited. You feel hundred bones. Like, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> so we get into hundred bones, uh, and this incorporates the the Kodak beat that Hip Hop Lou refers to. Uh, roll in peace as mentioned in the interlude uh now i give you credit for this track because i honestly just in my opinion didn't really care for the original <laughs> uh but i think that you took the beat and you really gave it a new life yeah uh your delivery is come like completely original and uh the flow hits in a set like a, a more rhythmic manner at least for me i feel like it's a lot more rhythmic and i think that was missing for me on the original mm. Um, like looking at the finished product of the song, like I'm really impressed and proud that like an independent artist was able to take an instrumental of a mainstream artist and then come out with a version that has a completely fresh sound and makes it almost like unrecognizable yeah. and still holds up to the original. Like mm-hmm. if you're gonna like do a cover of it, it hey, needs to hold up, and I I really more. feel like it does hold up. Um, like I listen to Hundred Bones over Rolling Peace <laughs> any day. Uh, I just think that your delivery hits. A little bit better and that is my opinion but uh the interlude kind of takes the same standpoint so i think you know dj ash says so hip-hop blues says so you feel me um it's a c- really completely new track after your take on it and i so i just want to commend that so where did the concept for 100 bones come from um i had i recorded that at my uh old condo in vegas and i was finally at the house by myself and um uh, my cousin Lala kept calling while I was trying to <laughs> get, get this freestyle out. So uh, uh, when that when I say the stop calling on my phone, mm-hmm. I was literally I had answered the phone, and so she could hear that I was recording. She's laughing, and then she hangs up. So then, uh, what I did was I recorded when I did the freestyle. I had I think I was sauced, and I did the rapping part. Mm-hmm. Then the next morning, still kind of sauced, <laughs> I listened to it. But you it. did it knowing that of that beat or just? just No, the beat, yeah, the beat had okay. played okay. while I was freestyling. Right. I did it at like 3 in the morning, just the rapping part. 
And then the, I got up at like nine and I played it back. But I, I didn't, I had, um, I didn't hear it the same. Like, I didn't want to hear the rapping. I wanted to hear what I what y'all hear is the singing. Right, yeah. That. So I left that playing while I was doing the uh. singing. And then uh, I muted and just listened to the singing, and that was going to be the track. And then one day, both of them was unmuted. Oh. And we was like, oh, that's a track. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife was like, when did you record the rapping part? And I was like, the night before. She was like, so you didn't even... <laughs> This wasn't like one session. No, like that's why it's two total different vibes. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It's like I was singing in response to the rap. Like yeah. I was not. It kind of has this like pull, yeah, and on, push and pull on, feel to it. Yeah. That's why when I when I did the lyric video, I had to do it myself because I don't want nobody to oh. <laughs> mess it up. You had to be so. in control. <laughs> yeah. <I had> to, <laughs> give me that. Let me do that. I got it, y'all. <laughs> what? Uh, so then, uh, following Hunter Bones, we get to track five. Uh, she vouge, I meditate. Yeah, she vogue. She vogue, I meditate. Yeah. I, I was French for a second yeah. there. <laughs> hey, that uh, was kind of lit. <laughs> one, of, one of the tracks, I, I, this is a track I hadn't heard before the album dropped, and it was probably one of my favorite tracks on the album from the instrumental to your delivery yeah. over the top of it. It kind of gave me like a Neptune's vibe. Hey, and that's an Anderson Pock beat. Yeah. Ah. Oh, okay. It's, it, his his name of it was Six Summers, I think. Okay. But he put out a instrumental project, so mm. I felt like he said he wanted me to do. Yeah. That. Like. <laughs> and even like your flow is kind of kind of like Pharrelli. Oh. A bit. Pharrell, you a bit. This, a right? bit. Pharrelli. <laughs> Let's work. Um. But it's a different sound for you, yeah. and I was I was pleased to hear a different kind of sound that, from you. That's one of those freestyles that the song almost didn't happen. That was the last one we did. That's oh, the last really? Song we did uh and like i had been i i think it was one of those we're about to have to go to vegas to do the recording i i just want one more i don't know what it's gonna be uh like i'm tired of listening to instrumentals uh like yeah that i've paid for i'm tired of listening yeah. to instrumentals that people have sent me yeah i'm gonna go on youtube and i'm gonna mm. see what feels good yeah and i think it was like the eighth beat that i played and when it came on, like, I didn't even think about it. I downloaded the beat and I loaded it up because nobody was there. So it's, you know, easy to get straight to it. Yeah. Soon as I uh, have pressed record, uh, Jasmine's coming in the house, but she's voguing to the damn <laughs> room. And I had a whole different. And you were moment. like, I'm on, a, I'm on a different level yeah. than this right now. Like that, what? <laughs> That's not that kind of song. Yeah. Like, yeah. Know, like, <laughs> So that's why I went, don't come in my kitchen, Vogan. <laughs> and you know how my brain is. So yeah. as I say something, when I heard the Vogan on the beat, mm -hmm. I was like, everybody feel like they important. And if you only certain, she's looking at me like, mm -hmm. <laughs> look at you coming up with a song. Like, <laughs> and before I knew it, the whole song came out. And uh, shout out to Baby Goat again, because she, when she was uh, mixing it, she was like, this is it. This is that. Hey, this is the song, you... like, and I had to record it, and she's like, this is the one. Yeah. Like, the way you just pushed that out, mm -hmm. like, in one take degree? Like, yeah. And it's, it makes your face want to go. Like, what? <laughs> and the fact that, you know, I, 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 I noticed that I'm having an ADHD moment mm -hmm. in the song and mm -hmm. get back to the message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I was so proud of myself. Oh, for like, sure. What? You are looking. And I finished the song. <laughs> you feel? And then when the beat's like coming like to an end, I'm like, I did it. Oh, <laughs> huh, gosh. And they're like, come out of the booth now. Like, and that I knew. And I thought it was going to be at the end. Uh, Yeah, yeah. But they were like, no. Nah. And yeah. I, I knew it wasn't going to be number one because, yeah. you know, Heaven Gates was sealed. Had to be interlude. Had yeah. to be Hunter Bones. Had yeah. to be, you know, F. Saint. So I was like, yeah. uh, -uh. And I was like, it can be right after. Yeah, but then it kind of gets into you, like, yeah. kind of march into it. You feel me? Yeah. It's perfect timing. Yeah. So you obviously have a range style and genre-wise, uh, yeah. but I was just happy to hear a type of beat that I, I just didn't really expect. <laughs> um, so a line I picked out, uh, everybody feeling like they important, but if you only serving self, is you growing? Come on. I'm so focused on evolving, I decided to be happy today. Come but on. who cares, right? You feel me? Uh, so it sounds Those like two. this song yeah. is talking about people around you who are selfish or hating on you, and you're basically like calling them out, like I ain't got time for that energy. Yeah, like, uh, like I'm I'm too busy glowing, like not letting that negative energy into yeah. my space. 
uh, and later you end the track by asking, did you meditate? Did you meditate? Like recognizing <laughs> that they need to get their energy right. You feel me? Uh, like uh, another friend, artist of mine, uh, Noah James, has a clothing line, uh, Be Majestic, and mm. one of the drop series of stylizes. Keep that shitty energy to yourself. You feel me? Which I feel like perfectly describes what you're talking about in this track. Uh, but so, where did the inspiration for the message of this track come from? Um, this this was about making sure that the the people around me and also the energies that dwell within my temple know that hey, you can keep that shit moving. Yeah. Like when when. When I'm feeling like my energy's weird or uneasy, yeah. I'll ask myself, like, did you meditate? Like, or how, oh, that's why you're feeling like that. Are yeah. you hungry? Yeah. Like, and if you're hungry, then you f get something to eat. Like, come on now. You, you, it's, it's never that serious. And when I do music, I find myself missing meals. Like, <laughs> yeah. So if, if I find myself out of my, out of my zone, then okay i have to make sure that i tap in with myself by meditating by grounding myself by becoming one and a lot of people around me that that's not their norm yeah so they're, they're looking at me like wait what like and i'm like okay everybody feel like they impotent but if you only serve in self then is you growing if you ain't got a stem and cap you ain't going nowhere <laughs> then the fact that i'm not telling them they have to do psychedelics but you know, I know it helps evolve you. Right. <laughs> I know it'll help you grow. Like I'm just, I'm just giving them a, a what do you call it? I'm planting a message in their head to know yeah. that either you can do psychedelics or you can meditate. Both of them will give you that euphoric feeling. Right. And so will my music. Like <laughs> there you go. You have options. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we follow that up with track six, America's nephew. Yes, the title. Track. The title track. Uh, and it starts off with this really cool vocal pattern, which includes the repeated lyrics, yeah. true love yeah. above me, yeah. ancestors, they love me, yes. paying an ode to your family that came before you and how you're mm -hmm. essentially making them proud. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's alternate, alternated with your speaking voice mm -hmm. saying, those are some really big dreams, on, better man. keep on dreaming, <laughs> which is commenting on you fulfilling your dreams and ex exceeding people's expectations yeah. of you. And perhaps even a double meaning for those who have doubted you. Come on. Uh, then the rap comes in, and I just really, really love this beat. Uh, your vocal choices really hone in on the syncopation of the track, and yeah. the messaging echoes kind of that same sentiment. You're, you're going to bring, be, keep being the highest version of yourself so that you can conquer your dreams. So I really love five and six together mm. because I think that these two tracks next to each other really showcase your talents. Like you start off really melodical, yeah. and then these tracks hit one right after another, and you feel the shift, mm -hmm. and it just pops. So the beats for both are like really in the pocket and then your wordplay over the top of it just kind of makes you need to keep listening to truly take it in. Like yeah. I had to I had to listen multiple <laughs> times to like really take it in. Uh, so we also hear some really cool vocal filters and we got like those vocal flangers yeah. that come in around the last like minute or so and they're layered over your voice, which is a really nice touch and it really accents the syncopation in the verse. Um, so I, I just really like hearing you play with vocal filters because I feel like your voice is really distinct. Yeah. Uh, so you don't, and you don't really overdo any filters here. Yeah, I always like, tell them, like, drop that shit to, like, 20%, 30%. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it provides, like, a really nice accent, <laughs> yeah. and then it switches it up without being too much. Um, but I want to let you talk about this track a little more in depth, especially since it's a title track. So I know this one in particular is special for you. Yeah. So let's just start at the beginning. How did this track come to fruition from the beat to the concept and the wordplay? And how do we get the America's Nephew that we hear on the album? So uh, shout out again to Jay Silva. Uh, Johanna is like an amazing producer. Um, he, he made um, the other beat that we were just talking about. Uh, F dot Saint. Yeah. You see, you know, so you can see his range. Like when I wanted people to see the difference from um, She Vogue, I Meditate, that's me freestyling. Mm -hmm. America's Nephew, I wrote that. Like yeah. I listened to the beat over and over. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I okay, this is the message. This mm -hmm. is what I want to. The only part of that that's freestyled is the second verse. That's mm. That's why I say, like, Normally, I don't come through on the second round. Like, I don't. I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It was an accident. Like, I had memorized the first verse, went to record it. You know, the beat keeps going. My brain's going to, you know, I, I just wanted to see what happened. Yeah. And when that came out, I was 
like, okay. And I, I'm holding Clumari. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I didn't expect it to happen. That's why she, she thinking like, this the only part. He's only rehearsed, you know, this. I didn't think it's no more. That's why she didn't even talk during like, the beginning. Yeah. Like, that's why I was like, okay, Clumari. Like, she knows that I'm recording. She know I'm holding her. And she's like right by the mic like me. But she still didn't say nothing until I was mm. done. It's, she's on a few tracks because <laughs> and I'm, so I'm you got to record talk. even with the kids. You yeah, know? yeah. But that song, me, I wanted not just to shout out my ancestors of the people who were here before me, but also the musicians who were here before me dead and alive. Yeah. They're considered my ancestors because yeah. I give thanks to them, too. Mm -hmm. Like. I if it wasn't for them, then I wouldn't have the urge to do this music. Whether you wouldn't have the inspiration. You feel me? I, I wouldn't even think that it was possible to let billions of people hear my music if it wasn't for them. Like, right. Their, their big dreams, their big goals, their big desires is what made mine even bigger. So it's like America's nephew, America, she passed in 2006. She wasn't able to hear my music. Right. America wasn't able to, you know, see me do all these shows and go on a promo tour, but I dropped the project on her birthday. And the world is getting to hear this. Like, you know, she she might not be here, but mm -hmm. I, I know she's in heaven. Like, hey, good job. Degree. Yeah. Degree, good job. Yeah. Like, this, and I felt like this song... The, every time I played it, the baby get excited. <laughs> you know, every time I played it, like even like we would have people that are come coming in and shopping with us, and we would have the music playing, and they're like, "When's that dropping?" And I noticed I would hear that one that's playing more than any song. Mm, wow! So that that's why I worked on it so long. Like, yeah, I I would go in and listen to the words, and if it didn't, like, oh, no, this doesn't. Mm -hmm. You're off topic. You're not, you know, that was the first time I got on my own head about a song. Like, yeah, this has to be, the it has title to be track. right. It's a, it's a title track. It has yes. to be right. This shows them who America's nephew is. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Coming from, so I, the date down to the date. Like that's, Man. I, and the fact that it was done, you feel me? Like, yeah. Like what? It was done on my birthday. Like I submitted it to my distributors on Halloween and it was able to be on time. Like, this timeline is just blowing my <laughs> like, mind. I'm so happy right now. It's so sick. Uh, so getting into the next track, track seven. Uh, BAPS, B-A-P-S. Before Black we get African into this, princesses. do you want to explain the title? <laughs> so uh, my sister, shout out Buddha. Uh, she used to... town i know how to get down just tell me what's up i promise like and then i i i that's more general that way people who are not from tk can be like i'm from your town but the people from tk can be like daddy i'm from tk i know how to get paid just tell me what's up and i promise that we gonna spray that's letting you know that if somebody is messing with you a woman from the south she gonna make sure that they get checked yeah like yeah. If anything else, she gonna make sure. Hey, what? He don't like tomatoes on his burger. Like, you know, <laughs> they gonna be more crunk than anybody else. Yeah. Like that's what this song is showing that sometimes, you know, you the the woman is you know how the in the lion in the in the lion packs like she's mm -hmm. leading sometimes mm -hmm. because she's the aggressor. You know. Yeah. But they know that he's the muscle. Mm -hmm. Don't try her, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and and going off that so we slow it down with this track right yeah. and and i appreciate it because it's a nice moment after two really hard hitting tracks yeah you know it's bringing in like that feminine energy yeah um and you keep it simple in the beginning we hear your versatility in both rapping and singing and then you have these really cool harmonies that are reminiscent of like really early spiritual folk songs mm. which i loved hearing you 
both play and pay an ode to, um, or play with and pay an ode to. I think that it really suits your voice really well. But then you've got these horns coming in. No, the horns. I, and, come on. And I that's where them. you kind of switch up the flow a little yeah. bit. And it gave me, I'm going to tell you what I, what I heard. <laughs> I heard Outcast, like spotty yaddy dope Come on. I and love that, that like, song. Da, 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 yeah. Like, I, I want to like kind of mix those two. Um, yeah. So that kind of vibe. So then you make a choice that I didn't expect. And I can say that I don't think I've heard from anyone. Uh, the last minute of the song, you're scatting, seemingly scatting with a baby. Mm -hmm. Is is that yeah, what you were, what exactly you were referencing? Like she, we we literally started. She was, she wouldn't let me put her down. She loved the wow. beat. And you both I in the say, mic at this yeah, point. We're, I'm holding. You're her in the same while mic. I'm recording. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like, eh, eh, eh. and I'm like, oh, you like them horns? Like, <laughs> no, I'm not, because the way the horns make me feel. Yeah. I'm knowing, like, that's why I switched it up. Yeah. Because I want y'all to pay attention. Like, I want people to fall in love with music again. Yeah. That's literally, like, what every I'm doing. Because that's the same song. kind of, that, I get that from, from the reference. Like, that, Man. that, that's, that's <laughs> cool. So, the, the, and, the, and what I also, pre like, you can hear that, like, it's, it's a moment because it's not crazy scatting. It's yeah. like, not like. Yeah, it's you know, it's 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 a it scatting ride. lullaby. Yeah, you don't even notice it's happening. Yeah, right? <laughs> every now and then she'll come in and she'll, and the fact that she's doing it on beat, and and she she's only thirteen months. Like, yeah, Soldier Boy, what the That's youngest crazy. baby recording? You ain't never. Yeah, definitely <laughs> something I've never heard on a hip hop album. Man. Um, so. I mean, you talked a little bit about that. Was there anything that you, else you want to add about, like, when you developed this track? Like, obviously, the choice to incorporate the baby coups were just because it happened. Yeah, that that I, I look at everything as you know divine timing, and you know her her enjoying the music, and the fact that when it came on, she's able to to know to sing. Like, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. most kids is not. They're not Oh, I love the way this sounds. Let me harmonize with the yeah. horns. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I just want to shout whatever the you lyrics know, are. Like, yeah. And the fact that she'll she's learned it that fast. Yeah. And I don't she's I, surrounded by it. Do you feel like she's it, surrounded? Yeah. I know how much music is your life. She's surrounded yeah. by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's she's gonna be a beast. Yeah. She came in t telling me what to do when she came in here. Oh, like, <laughs> you know, there's a, a cat over here. Okay, yeah, like cat. You see the cat? Like, just want everyone to know we're on the same page, handling it. Um, all right, so then we get to track eight, goals, goal, golds. Yeah. Uh, which feels kind of like the anthem. Yeah. On the album, it's got this really hard hitting beat, and I don't know if this is accurate, but kind of like a Rick Ross sound, mm. like anth anthemy. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a, but it also has this really heavy trap style to it, which yeah. you always, I always appreciate because they always kill. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I just love about you as an artist is that you're unpredictable. <laughs> uh, instead of coming in hard with the bars on an anthem, you kind of start off a little more sing-songy, yeah. uh, speaking before you really dive in with the my 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 feeling yeah. so high high high, <laughs> and you kind of stay with that vibe until you get to the more. I don't know where my mind's at. Yeah. Uh, and then you dive in the bars and get a little harder flow. And the more I like, the more I listen to it as well as all your tracks, I start to see why you made that choice because it it does have that hard hitting anthem feel, but it also does have this what we were talking about earlier the trippy ethereal yeah. element to it. The psychedelics are coming yeah. in. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't even high when I did that. That's no. Why, that's why I was happy because. I like I have been like I said in the other track like I have been meditating before recording every song mm. so that I can feel a different kind of high yeah so that time I had meditated longer and I was like because I this is an important feature because free soul I, mm -hmm. I you know I respect his artistry yeah and I knew that I wanted this song to, like I have been you know I wanted this to be an important song for all the people in the spiritual community who are on the same vibration as us. So, you know, I'm, I'm letting them know like, man, like I'm so high right now, <laughs> you know? And all, all we did was focus on our breathing. Like, <laughs> now let's get to what, you know, and the, the, the way that I put the, the name out is, they think I'm saying gold in my mouth. That's why I did it like that. I'm saying goals, guys. Like, 
But so you just put all of them in the title? Because yeah. that's what I was. That was my last question. Was was to explain yeah, the title? Like, like y'all are gonna think I'm saying golds or gold, but I'm saying goal. So <laughs> I want you to have multiple goals in your mouth. Like, <laughs> like don't you, you can have the gold too, but the only way you can get to those is yeah. Through the and they're goals. all they're all interconnected. That's why it's in order, yeah. <laughs> like, because it can be goals and then you're like go like yeah. i did it like, yeah i achieved this goal and yeah. now you can get that gold like don't exactly. cheat yourself treat yourself exactly <laughs> and so you kind of make us sit back with that with that chill yeah. and ride that vibe a little bit and you show a lot of restraint which sets up that feature mm -hmm. uh so free souls on this track like you yeah. mentioned and I that's fucking tight to, come on i wanted him to be able to he's he's a trip <sighs> He's a psychedelic trip. Yeah. His, music, his, his Spotify picture has a third eye. Come on. <laughs> it's, man, this dude is very trippy. Yeah. Like, come on. He's, he's been, he's been putting out that heat. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's not playing with these guys. So I knew, like, when I, I, I sent him the track and, you know, I just let him know the concept and how I was going to ride it. Man, he, it, what? When when you had had a moment of silence, like wait, what? When I listened to it back, I had my face like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, good job, bro. Like, how how did you want to link it up with Free Soul? Um, we have mutual friends, and we had already been friends before. And I I, I think uh, and it's funny because shout out to D Rock, uh, the menace, because he is our mutual uh friend. And uh, it's so beautiful how going to psychedelic festivals and performing at them, you meet a lot of artists whose music is so dope yeah. that you don't realize how big of an influence they're going to put like, oh, yeah. onto your music. Because it's like, I, I, I'm living the same life that they're living, but my fans don't know it because I'm not, I'm not speaking that. Mm. like i can't be scared to be spiritual in my music right like, <laughs> yeah like so goals uh the this song the goals go gold is so important because i had to i had to like i had to check my ego at the door basically like <laughs> yeah like do a song that you wouldn't normally do and sit down and write it i wrote this one too like this mm -hmm. was one of those ain't no freestyling you're yeah. gonna yeah tell me what's on your mind like meditate write it down and then feel it and, and don't just send him anything like it pr act like this is your project that's important to you yeah like <laughs> for sure and then so go, you end the track with a little monologue yeah where you essentially say that you're taking the listener on a journey mm -hmm. and then to get to where they want to get to and to get there effortlessly and you end the track with the line i'm not here to save you come on i just want you to get better bro Come on. Essentially, you're saying that you're leading by example, but yeah. you're not claiming to be anyone's savior. Yo, I'm not like what? Yeah, and <laughs> that an that alchemist. and that's the kind and right, and that's <laughs> the kind of message that you hit on throughout the album. That as America's nephew, you're on a mission to be the best the artist that you can be, mm -hmm. uh, the highest version of yourself. Yo. But that you can't dictate anyone else's path, and that the path is all your own, and all you can do is lead the most authentic life and as as an example. For those of you cross paths with yes and follow your journey um was was that the main intention that, of the man, track or is there any, you, anything that's, else you want to add to it or that right there it's like you you was in my brain when i was there writing it that's exactly like exact that like i want people to be able to feel different yeah like this music is going to be addicting like, yeah <laughs> put it on every playlist yeah like but that's that's awesome too because like as an artist you're like here let me let me bring you up with me like you yeah. see me elevating like you can you can rock with me or you, you or you can't the way you are I yeah i want you to get better like, right and and make sure that you're you're eating you're hydrated mm -hmm. you get you take care food. of yourself like make sure self-love is the best love yeah people are gonna be uh, people are gonna be looking at you like you crazy because you decided to get water at every meal who cares yeah. bro yeah they're looking at you crazy because you're uh, giving thanks before you eat your food. Who cares? Mm -hmm. I don't have to just do this at home. Like, mm -hmm. no, uh, I'm going to be the highest version of myself mm -hmm. as often as possible. And if I feel myself dipping low or mm -hmm. dropping low, I'm going to remind myself, no, nah, I can 
live in my highest version right now like i don't have to wait like, yeah yeah like yeah this is my time you feel me this is my day go oh <laughs> all right so i just i wanted we could talk about this song all day but i i want to get into track nine because yeah. i'm really excited to talk uh. about this track gone on the line dance song so i am so excited to talk about this track <laughs> because as soon as i heard it i was like the great has done it again <laughs> Uh, I really love this track because both in both the arrangement and the lyricism because a lot of people maybe not a lot of people know that I'm a huge Fallout fan come on the video game and especially New Vegas and this beat uses those like twangy country western elements that are really present in the Fallout soundtrack so I was like instantly hooked from that first guitar twang and I'm not much of a fan of modern country but that gamut and like the older country like music that plays like those cowboys that like no one want to mess with mm -hmm. you know they wear the, like the long leather jackets and step out yes. to the duel before they say draw you know like i love they that don't shit. Even count. like <laughs> like old town road was cool like props to Lil nas x but i heard this song and i was like that is how you do a country hip-hop hybrid on. like Appreciate that's it yo. the country sample like perfectly Man, complements the, the hip-hop beat, beat i knew i didn't even it, have to it's it, like they're it's perfect a perfect blend of two completely different genres and then you add your flow on the top of that as well as the feature and it just kind of makes it this perfect amalgamation of both genres and it wasn't overdone yeah. it was just like a good blend of both seemingly opposite styles while playing an ode to both in a really musical way that just works and i really hope that you shoot a video for this song because that oh, shit would yes. be lit we definitely are we actually gonna do like a competition like for it i have uh my my wife and um two other uh male dancers that are going to be trying to create a line dance. okay okay and then we're gonna make the challenge like we're gonna put the challenge out probably around christmas and so they'll have from christmas oh hell yeah you're gonna do valentine's. a challenge they have from christmas until valentine's Ooh. to do their own variation of the dance that they create and the best okay. dance team i'm trying to decide yeah I'm yeah, yeah give them like a few hundred dollars like or close to five yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do but i'm gonna make sure that i bless them mm -hmm. for showing me like how fast you can come with this dance but make it your own like yeah. make it a line dance like yeah yeah see yeah let me see y'all how y'all do line dances where you're from yeah. that way i can i'm really gonna make everybody country they're just gonna <laughs> But what they're they don't from know, Texas. you feel me? What they don't know is the the people in in Texarkana, they they doing this line dance for real. Like yeah. they they have like horse riding events and stuff like that. So they gonna Rodeos. have a little more practice than the people that's like in New York and yeah. going to horse rides. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I feel like this challenge is about to, especially you know people on TikTok. Once they oh yeah find out about a dance yeah. Oh Lord! It's you know that's that's it. That's where it's at. <laughs> uh, so where did you get the idea for a line dance song? It was uh, and it was it was a great choice. But what inspired it to be on the album? Uh, what what's crazy is uh, shout out to uh, Bella Gotti. When I tell you, uh, she was at the house and we 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 didn't know that this was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> like it it's the fact the reason why it's a line dance song is because every after we recorded it. Every time it played, people would, you know, they're, st and I'm like, what yeah. are y'all doing? Yeah. Like, I had never, I'm like, what is they, we don't do this in LA, bro. We're not, <laughs> we're not line dancing. And I'm like, y'all just do that automatically? Like, <laughs> they're like, hell yeah. You don't see how this makes you feel? Like, we could play this somewhere and do this for forever. I was like, this is lit. Okay, yeah. they want to do a line dance yeah. to this. So I asked my wife, like, can you come up with one? She's like, yes. <laughs> Can you imagine like how dope that'd be creating my own line dance, like mm -hmm. your own version? You know, everybody did the cha cha slide, yeah, the yeah. shuffle, the wobble, your yeah. own version of it. Like yeah. what? Yeah, I didn't. I accidentally created a dance song. Like, yeah, what? Without giving, you know, it's not the normal dance song. It's no. not that to the left, you know, dip right circle. I'm not giving yeah. you instructions. You're gonna make up a dance to the words. Pay attention, mm -hmm. like let me see what uh, how creative you are like, yeah show us yeah uh so let's get to the feature bella Gotti, who you mentioned oh, yes. uh she's got a kind of like meg the stallion kind of vibe oh man she's uh, so dope it's such a nice touch to the track so tell us about bella Gotti. where'd she come from how'd, how'd you guys link up uh bella is from all over uh you know she she a g so we ain't gonna put her location out uh, no, not not no specifics <laughs> but, she, but you know uh, she's from all over but she's really um I say she has a sound of her own because she gives you like that New Orleans twang yeah. with a little uh, 
Texas yeah, mixed in with some it. Her, yeah. You feel me? And it's so beautiful because she don't she not gonna second guess it. Like yeah. oh, this be hard. All yeah. right, let's go. Yeah. Like when soon as the soon as the beat came on and we knew what we wanted the hook to be, we both like went straight to the type typing, typing, typing. We knew what our, our our bars was finna be. And when we saw how long the beat was, yeah. we didn't get nervous. Yeah. We was happy because we had like, so oh, cool. many bars. Like, yeah. what? I can yeah. use all of this? I was like, all right, so instead of us, you know, just both doing a whole bunch of bars and splits, we're just going to go back and forth. Like, and the fact that we just are, we knew what the topic was. Yeah. And we knew the assignment and we just like, I understood what? the assignment. You feel me? <laughs> like, we just went back and forth. And and I, I think it's interesting that when we were doing um, the ad libs, I I I was like, hey, so what if we do like some opera, mm. you know, singing in the background for our ad libs? Mm. She was like, you think I can't do it? I can do it. And then she did it amazingly. Yeah. And I was like, all right, so so just do it on one of them, and then I'm gonna move it, yeah. you know, around on the rest. Mm -hmm. So when on the second verse, I'm like placing it. I'm like, they, yeah. Oh, how will they know? <laughs> how will they know? It's so beautiful the way that the song just came together. We didn't have to really think about it. When we give you, it's like we're explaining who we want to go on. We want mm -hmm. the people with the non potent trees to go on. <laughs> we want the women who are doing too much to go mm -hmm. on. Like, mm -hmm. come on. Like, if you're not about your money, then go on. Oh, like, yeah. we want all y'all. Get out my face, bro. Like, get it together. Like, this song happened so effortlessly, and we did it in one night. Wow, we didn't have no whole bunch of back and forth like we mm -hmm. did that in one night. I uh, we recorded it uh, at my house, and uh, I took the sessions to Baby Goat, and she freaked it, and and made it sound like we recorded yeah. it in Vegas with her. Yeah, and it, I was listen. I'm in there just listening as she's like tweaking stuff, and I'm like, this is crazy. Like they're magicians, what? they're wizards. Jesus. Producers do not get enough credit, man. It's it's insane. So uh, then we get to track ten, the longest name on the album. Oh, it yeah. even has an acronym in parentheses and a kind of long acronym at that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain the title for us? All right. So I, you see, I did the mic like a shot because <laughs> we about to get lit. So when I do my double XL freestyle, I already know that mine's gonna be the best. I'm hands down because I'm gonna be freestyling in real life and <laughs> I want I want to make sure that I go last so that I freestyle mm -hmm. about whatever they just said right so that they know for sure that I'm doing this in real life okay so when we did that freestyle like that's why at the end of it you hear a door opening everything like mm. we're not every time that plays in my house and I hear it oh I think somebody's opening my door like <laughs> <laughs> like it's so clear you can hear like we were in the living room that was that was in the condo or in las vegas mm, yeah we was like we're preparing and that was the best one wow and i was like yo so the acronym is what he be saying mm. hold up wait a minute hey hey wait a minute hold up wait a minute you know uh. like because that was that was uh flaco's way like skylar was basically saying I get it. Like this freestyle shit is easy. Like that's what he was saying. Like mm -hmm. he was excited because at first I was like, "Come on, like we're gonna keep doing this until it feels comfortable." And he's like, "Bro, this is. What if I mess up? Who cares?" Uh. So then when that beat came on, he was like, "Hey, hey, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. I think I get it now. Uh, I think I get it. It's now. clicking for him. Yeah, like so. And then he's and so he's." Uh, got a charm on my chain, you know. So yeah, he's, yeah. I told him like, just environment. Yeah, life, take it in life. Yeah. Rap about life. Don't be trying to rap about what everybody else rap about. Rap about life. Ever what's happening right now? How do you feel right now? Like so, he was like, I ain't do the drugs no more. So <laughs> I got a chain on with a charm on it. Like, come on, keep it. And I'm I'm in the background like, yeah, keep going. Like yeah. <laughs> so then when he's about to when he was about to stumble, I just hurry up. And I started freestyling, and I didn't know I was gonna. Um, I I didn't know what I was gonna talk about, but I wanted to show him that, bro. That's why you hear me like Hoo -hoo, at the end. Cause <laughs> I was proud of myself. Like, yeah, yeah. We done did. We done freestyle for hours. Yeah. And this is the last one, and we're like, we're gonna record. 
You didn't record any of the other ones? No. We're stupid. What? Of course. We were probably sauce. I was going to say, <laughs> what the? F yeah, we probably could have put out a whole EP. Yeah. Like, we're in, what? It was lit. But we recorded that one, and, but that's perfect because we recorded it right before everyone's coming home. So it's like, they came and ended our session, basically. Yeah. Because you didn't have a choice. Yeah. So it's like, and then the song's done. And yeah. now look at us. We're we yeah. up next. Like, <laughs> and not, not even up next. I'm him. I'm yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you have some shout outs on the song, yeah. uh, including one for your son, mm -hmm. where you tell yeah, him, Kanias, get the dough. Okay. Shout out, Kanias. <laughs> and I like when you speak the next line because it's a different inflection. Yeah. Almost as if you're speaking in his tone. When you say, he said that it is the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go on to shout out the feature on the track Sky Flacco. Yeah. For the feature verse when you say, heard me Flacco up next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I say, uh, purging all weak shit with finesse. And finesse is an artist, too. Uh, she's a uh, shout out finesse. She's an artist in Las Vegas. Uh, but she's from uh, California. Um, and uh, me and her had did a song that never came out. Uh, we had did it for a New Year's uh, performance in Las Vegas. Uh, and it was it was on the Purging. It, like, had the Purging stuff going on at the beginning mm -hmm. from the movie Purge. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why I was, like, you know, Purging, we shit with finesse. Her, me, and Flacco up next. Like, like. You guys watch movies beats, before you record? You feel? <laughs> you know, and, hey, don't tell nobody. But I've never seen that movie. I don't watch the purge. Uh, yeah, I don't watch gory. I've lived that life. I don't. Yeah, no, it's it's ter it's terrifying. Yeah, I don't, don't. watch gory. You, if you want to sleep, don't don't watch it. No, I've lived that life. Yeah, so I don't. I don't yeah. have to watch it. if I want nightmares. Just yeah. think about the past. Well, that, okay, well, <laughs> that's a different conversation. Uh, but anyway, so then Sky the Flacco moving on. Uh, then Sky Flacco takes the hook, and then that really just kind of melts into his verse. And yeah. both your tones have that nice contrast in your delivery, where Flacco's delivery really rides. Yeah, and I'm excited. You hear me in the back, like yeah. turn it up, like, yeah. keep going, like. And I'm your delivery is more in your face. Yeah, because I was a, holding it's a nice the contract. Mic. <laughs> yeah, I was holding the. the, the okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> That's why I'm more like prominent, cause yeah, I see. he wasn't really trying to. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. He didn't think we was gonna really record. Uh, he thought it was game. Like, no, yeah. we're really gonna do this. Like, he was moving away from it. Like, no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a, it's a nice contrast. Uh, so, do you want to tell us anything about Sky Flacco? Like, man, uh, Skyler is somebody who is very near and dear to my heart. He's always like been a close friend of mine. He, uh, I met him at our shop on Venice Beach. Um, and uh, we worked together for a while. We always partied. We rode home together. Like we, man, we had a lot of fun. Me, him, my wife, we had, a, it was like a, a crew of like seven of us. And uh, we worked hard and he never was not either drawing or singing or doing music mm -hmm. and i would ask him like bro why are you not doing music like yeah and he's like man don't nobody want to do the music with me yes i do like come on you're good like let's do this <laughs> like he's like man I, i've been you know in this industry for a while you know i've been in hollywood for years since i was young you know i don't want to be doing this all the time now like and i was like i don't i don't care uh, you're gonna do music with me bro like <laughs> and he's like oh man you for real huh yes and years later he told me like, "Hey, I'm in Vegas, you know." And keep in mind, we're met in L.A. So he, I, I had moved to Vegas, and he was like, "Hey, I'm in Vegas. Uh, where you at, asshole?" Or some shit like. And I was like, uh, "He's like, and you better hit me back, cause he's thinking like I'm not serious about the music." And I was like, "Bro, pull up, let's record." He's like, "You for real?" Yes. Like, and then the song, like when my wife hit him and, uh, recently when it dropped, like, "Hey, Flacco." The great put the song on the project. <laughs> He's like, man, I miss y'all, bro. Like, what's up, man? I love it. It sounds amazing. Like, yeah, you, you, I believe in you. Like, yeah. sometimes, you know, people got to know that the generation of artists that's finna blow up now, mm -hmm. we're not about that beef shit. We're going to be uplifting yeah. our friends who are musicians who need that. Like, somebody to tell them, like, bro, you're good. Yeah. Like, forget what they talking about. You're good, and I'm going to push you to be on stage if you got to go on tour with me like you're yeah. gonna do this like mm -hmm. what you mean you don't have enough tracks all right let's go record yeah you. like <laughs> I, and flaco is good like the way he can find a part of the beat that you're not listening to mm -hmm. like, what yeah that's important like i'm a left-handed artist so i listen to stuff different 
Right. You know, I I listen to music that most people aren't listening to because I'm paying attention to what's the in between, like you mm. know. And Skylar makes you like tap into a different part, so I appreciate him for like he he's a he's the like I, he's the, I'm not gonna say like most important feature because that's not you know nice to say, but <laughs> Skylar is besides my wife is like the closest to my heart on the project. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Him and Kanias. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. All right, so then we come to track eleven. This for the Hen- this for Hennessy. Yeah. Uh, this is another track that I know you've been working on for a while. I just changed the name. I, y- I, it's for Hennessy. Uh, I, it's for uh, Cardi B sister. <laughs> it's for Hennessy. The song is for her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and the track that we hear on the album, it definitely has like we talked about a fresh coat of paint. Yeah. Uh, you you kind of took the original verse and split it in half. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you gave the first half to the female voice. Yeah. Uh, which is an Mixed interesting choice. Color. Yeah. But it's cool to hear the song take on both this feminine and masculine mm-hmm. energy, uh, and then both verses end with the same refrain. Hey. Uh, and it gives it that duality once the going in and we gone 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 yeah. comes in right. Uh, and making that choice results in the longest track on the album, on. clocking in at just over four and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what was the inspiration for taking that original verse and splitting it like that? So I think, you know, I think out of all the tracks, this one and uh, the, the these last few tracks besides like the last track are the, the ones I've been working on the longest. Right. So this one was like one of the first ones. Mm-hmm. And I just knew that I, I'm one of those artists that before I record a song and put it on a project, I'm a perform it for a crowd and yeah. or a few crowds to yeah. see how they react. So yeah. I know, like, should I put this on a project? And this song, the crowd has always went mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. So I knew when you put this out, you get one chance, bro. It has to be perfect. So I was always looking for that perfect feature that would do the second part of the song. Like, yeah. I was always at the beginning. Yeah. And then... um one day i uh i was performing it and my wife was in the audience and she was spitting that mm-hmm. refrain that's at the end she was spitting mm-hmm. it so good yeah i was like what what why did you do that better than me like what's going on like well you were she was like no i was mimicking you yeah because she's heard it so many times and yeah i'm like what i said do you think you could do it that fast like if it was yours on if and at first i was gonna do the same cadence different words mm. but she spit mine right. so good why yeah. not yeah and let her go first so they think i'm copying her you know like you feel me so i wanted the hook is saying once i get you off the hennessy you know and i wanted her to be like what what you ain't got to get me off shit <laughs> i got some mongos some straight <laughs> bong holes some rose so you know like we don't need whatever you're trying to sell sir like i wanted her to come off like uh, like what like because i think a lot of my favorite female rappers that's doing shit it's the ones that are letting you know like we don't need your money bro. yeah like, we got our own shit like yeah <laughs> and that's what's important so right. i wanted it to have that that good that taste in their mouth of yo this song is hard but this chick because every time we perform it we we performed it at a, a pre-show for an award show like uh, two weeks ago, and because I, I was doing this little promo tour, and when I tell you, sh- we're doing the hook, and soon as she starts rapping, the girls are like, hey, you know, they don't even let it marinate. Mm-hmm. Like they're excited to hear a girl rapping and what she's saying. Yeah. Like in the fact that they're saying a to respond to certain lines, mm-hmm. like they're like, yeah, like mm-hmm. you, you better preach, you know. And it's so beautiful. And then when I get to my verse, and they realize I'm not rapping to her or battling mm-hmm. her, I'm I'm doing a song yeah. with her. Yeah, it's like, a it's a call and response. You feel me? It's not no, yeah, bitch, whatever you said is trash. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. I'm finna, hey, what? <laughs> I'm telling you that d- ditto. Yeah. <laughs> to we what on the she same page. Said. Yeah, yeah, feel me? Like, let them know that they need to stop asking all these questions. <laughs> like, exactly what she said. Like, and, and this song is, I feel like it's good that it's the longest simply because it it's the one that we always perform. Yeah. And it gets the, and it's the, it's it, got the energy and the way that I cut it, you know, when I snip it and cut it, I make the hook so short, you know, mm-hmm. so that we're able to yeah knock it down from four minutes, I think to like I think I can get it to two and a half. Oh okay, 
<laughs> Sick. But I, I just, I really liked the change to hearing it from the original to yeah, how it is on the album. Uh, so then we get into track 12. I really like this song. Mm -hmm. uh, this track has an interest, is interesting because it's another ode to your unpredictability as an artist. <laughs> the track, it really has this like haunting vibe to mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. But with a song, the title like, I really like this song. You'd expect it to be really upbeat, mm -hmm. uh, but the vibe's actually really eerie. Uh, and <laughs> your yeah, <laughs> and your delivery again just suits the beat so well because uh, you come in with another interesting vocal effect for the second refrain, mm -hmm. like with like that helium balloon yeah. or like the crazy frog kind of effect, yeah, like, where, where it gets like really high pitched yeah. and robotic. <laughs> and then again, you don't overdo it though. Uh, like on cue, we hear you say "say less," uh -huh. and it flips back to your voice uh -huh. without the effect. Uh, so you give us a little taste of it, but then flip back like, nah, like I can really do this. Uh, so you also have some interesting reverb on your vocals that really uh, echoes the eerie vibe. So where did those those vocal choices come from? Did you always have that in mind, or was it just something that happened in the studio? Or um, so actually, that this song, because I was so uh, uh, nervous about it, like I didn't want mm. nobody to hear it. I recorded this myself. Why were you nervous about this song? Um, because it's. It's the kind of music I want to do, but I know people aren't uh, okay, expecting okay. that. Okay, okay, all right, I understand so, that. So uh, I recorded this and you know did most of the mixing and stuff myself. Okay. So that when I sent it to the engineer, just master it. Like, <laughs> don't you know? Don't yeah. don't work, don't try to tell me to critique it or nothing. Like, yeah. It's done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like the the effects and everything, like I put yeah. that stuff on. So the you voice. put all those yeah. on there. Yeah, like I needed it to sound like a certain way yeah. because of how it felt. And you know, when you're sauce, you can't tell your brain no. Like right. it, I I just happened to find every plugin I needed instantly. Like there wow. was no searching, clicking, clicking, clicking. No, I didn't have to do that. Like it's like my brain knew what it was doing. Yeah. But now I don't know what's going. <laughs> but it's so lit because. Um, when I did it, the the person who's talking at the end of the song, that's who said that, you know, I just spent 10 bands. Okay. And I'm like, you know, say less, you know, because my girl will take your man's wallet, stop <laughs> it, show some respect to swallow it. That's why I get, I go yeah. from being playful in the and song yeah. to, okay, I'm finna show y'all, I'm finna eat. Let me just devour this track right quick like yeah and i get straight to that and i i enjoy the way that that beat mm -hmm. feels like for sure that playing it super loud it doesn't hurt like it's, yeah it's a <laughs> i like beats that are like that like they're not overpowering it's not too much and i i freestyled that so well that i had i was like this has to yeah i really like this song like and that that singing part mm -hmm. was um after i had played it and memorized it the i really like this song ended up on there yeah like uh that and i was like i'm not taking that off because i'm singing that when it's playing like as and when i'm playing it and trying to learn the lyrics after i it's all played i'm singing this so why would i not put that on the song because what if somebody else is like hearing that mm -hmm. too like yeah. and then i told myself like for the video i'm a uh i'm gonna shoot it in like a store so I can pretend like it's playing and so they're like, I right. uh, and, and they're all like, yeah, in the aisles. So yeah. yeah, like somebody playing the game and it pops up on the TV and they're like, I really like they don't know why, but yeah, it's stuck in just, their head. The, yeah. it's like a zombie <laughs> yeah. just dancing to it. That's yeah. sick. So it's that cook coke crack. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what this song is. It's drop. It's drop. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get to track thirteen. Uh, twelve thirty four. Time to grow up. To great. Yeah. Uh, we slow it down with this one, which I also know it's a track that you've also been working on for a while. Yeah. But it also has a new name now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now it it's be called Matata. Yeah. Not Matata. And, and I listened to yeah. the original after the. It, it's, yeah. it was pretty cool. But now it's it's time to grow up. To great. Why the name change? Um. So my son was born at twelve thirty four. Ah, okay. That's that was my next question. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's my favorite time because it's, it's, it's a one, good time. Two, three, four. Yeah. Like, what gets what? So that, that explains pretty, why he's so organized. You feel me? <laughs> that and it's so lit because it's like that. How my whole life that's my favorite time, and then my son's born at that time at ten, ten, oh. Do you have a tattoo with that time on you? You know what? That's next. <laughs> I'm gonna put it. You're right. You're right. <laughs> 
ideas. Put it, I'm gonna put it like under here, so they gotta be close. I gotta be able to see it all the time. Um, yeah, that I I feel like every time I see that time, I tell myself time to grow up. Oh, okay. So maybe other people will do it, mm -hmm. and they won't say time to grow up to great because I I'm doing that to yeah. your own self, like like yeah. tell your tell yourself <laughs> to grow up. And what's so lit is I um. When I play the song, it f it makes me feel interesting. And I've had people tell me they were It makes you feel interesting? Yeah, like it makes you know, I don't like feeling. Yeah. And it, it makes you do that. Uh huh. You're like, uh, like why are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> and when I play it, I'm like, all right, turn it. If it if it does that, I'm like, all right. I'm like, how am I gonna perform this? Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I I do really love about this song is your vocal layering on the chorus. Like you get into your higher range that works really nicely with the oh, instrumental, yeah. but you also keep it grounded with your lower range. Mm -hmm. And then you're harmonizing like perfectly with yourself <laughs> in these yeah, opposite yeah. ranges. <laughs> that's really cool to hear. And it's a, very pleasing to the ear. And it works well because this is, it's kind of a love song and mm -hmm. like giving thanks to people who've been there before yeah. you, right? Like you mentioned your parents and you reflect on old memories. You talk about how you're grateful for everything. Yeah. Uh, talk about the inspiration for this track and how it came about, because I know this is one you've been sitting on for a while. So, uh, Anytime I'm, you know, working on music and I and I disappear for a while, start growing my head. Like y'all see, if I'm working, you see how much hair I got, y'all. When I'm working <laughs> on a project, I don't. I'm not going to the barber shop. I'm not getting a haircut, bro. I'm working on music. So when I'm growing my hair out, that usually means I ain't talked to nobody in a while. So this song is like a letter to my mom and all my mother figures and all the angels who helped me. Like, you know, thank y'all. Thank y'all for looking out, and I'm doing this for a reason. Like, hey, I know y'all miss me, you know, but hey, I'm, I'm trying to do this mm -hmm. thing, bro. Like, I, I feel it. There's something that's telling me that these Grammys that I have written my name on, they're coming. Like, you mm -hmm. gotta keep going. Mm -hmm. And if every, it, it took me finding the reason why this is at the bottom and not the top, even yeah. though it's one of the most important. When I was scrapping everything and I was upset that I was scrapping everything because yeah. the, I felt like the engineers just wasn't getting it right and I wasn't loving the songs no more, this played, the old version. And I was like, this is, this is, this song is why I started, bro. Yeah. Like, dang. If I don't do it, I, I have to do it. I yeah, it has keep, to, it has to get out. Like, I gotta keep going. And then I thought about like, the times when like only you and probably a few other people know where I was deathly sick and still mm -hmm. performing like yeah in the conversations that me and you had that's why I say if it ain't got no ain't no season on it ain't got no McCormick <laughs> on it like come on man this ain't real like that was that was my like, last I'm question about that. Ashley, like what's going on <laughs> I like, wore my, I wore my McCormick come vodka on, they gotta know like what like it's 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 crazy because I don't have like I don't have a lot of people like some people have like you know um you know hundreds of people who are like in their circle telling them yeah hey, you're gonna i have my my handful of people my 10 people that i know like are gonna push me like the great keep doing this no mm -hmm. matter what keep doing this and i feel like this project was important but it's not gonna be as good as the ones that got your hands in it so right. it's like Y'all think y'all think this is that sauce? Y'all think this is uh that's that's the baby y'all. Yeah, she, 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 she says she says y'all are talking too long. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost uh, done, baby. Uh, that you know, I feel like you know when you are around those people that are important, it makes the music better. Yeah. And it's like now that I don't have like the clouds of doubt and you know um you know anxiety like on my head. And I was able to finish this and I'm so happy about it. Yeah. And people who are important to me are like, yo, this is a work of art. Mm -hmm. I have people who are running festivals messaging me like, yo, this is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I love this. I can't stop playing it. And I'm like, thank you. Like, I got so overwhelmed with messages the first day that it came out, the second day, the third day. Like, people... Like what? Thank y'all. Like hold yeah. on. Like 
<laughs> you can you can hear the growth right, from from right. poetry and motion <laughs> to, to hear. Like, and it's like the thousand people who got the physical copy of poetry and motion. Mm -hmm. Like y'all got a piece of me. Yeah, because it's gone now. What I took it down. I yeah, did, and folks thought I was. And that, no, I understand why you did. Yeah, because you don't get shit for Spotify. Yeah, you, what? Like if if people that, yeah. After I think my project had hit, it was in between um, six to nine months of it being out. After it hit a million streams, I got about two thousand dollars. Yeah, that was y'all get what? Like. I don't get it, bro. Take, take my get take. <laughs> no, I, like, I get what? it. It's a, it's a choice, it, but and if you want to hear that, you better go on YouTube. I bootlegged it. It's one track. <laughs> That's the only way you're gonna be able to hear. It. You're gonna have to listen to it from beginning to end, like, cause I, um, I felt like I I felt like that. Spotify, yeah, like they, they played us. Like, yeah, they don't, no, not, for sure. I mean, it's it's a tool. Like I I love it and I hate it. I hate it because of you know it it, it doesn't it doesn't pay artists what it should but i love it because it's you it it enables you to discover artists what's that re, what's that, that that rewind or thing the re, uh, yeah yeah the year rewind or something thank y'all i was played in 55 countries yeah. thanks yeah spotify prove it yeah <laughs> yeah prove it yeah show me yeah help me go on tour yeah I, I got I, I on the little you know spotify artist account mm -hmm. i have screenshots of each city that was playing it yeah. 22,000 here, 18,000 here a month, bro. And y'all, a month? This is not. Come on, y'all should be ashamed. Yeah. Like, get y'all lives together. Yeah. Uh, so we get into the verse, and it's the same verse that I'm familiar with. And you keep the, the Jehudi, the poet name in yeah. there, which is a former stage name of yours. Yeah. So even though you've changed your name a couple times since mm -hmm. you wrote the song, you still kept that in there, and the, yeah. the verse I, is that's still my intact. poetry name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so how many cuts of the vocals did you wind up doing on this track since you've been working on it for so many years, and it's been through seven um, versions, right? You know, I think like five different yeah. versions over the years the song has changed. And I think uh, what what makes it so, so lit is... Um, it still it still has that give me a hug kind of vibe like yeah, the first yeah, yeah. track mm -hmm. that's why i separated them like that i yeah. didn't want people to get suffocated yeah. you know i didn't i wanted them to be <laughs> too able much intimacy to, you feel me yeah, yeah. like i, I want to i want you to feel me but wait until the next project to feel me yeah, me, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me make sure that y'all are paying attention before i give you some some yeah deep shit like yeah so after that warm hug, we get to track 14. We got the last two tracks. Uh, VIP at 4040. Oh, uh, that's a manifestation. So you know? we get to another eerie track uh, where you paint this picture of being in VIP and you're feeling yourself. Uh, but it's kind of this metaphor, yeah. right, for this level that you've gotten to. And now everyone just kind of wants a piece of it. Come on. Uh, come on. And you're basically saying that, like, hey, I, like, I worked to get to where Thank I'm at. You. Like, you can't just come in here and take all the perks without doing any of the work. You, you can stand here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can but don't yeah. drink nothing. Right, yeah. <laughs> but if you really fuck, but if, you know, people really fuck with you and build you up, then they can flex with you and come elevate on. to your level. Uh, but you ain't got time to wait on them to play around because you got business to take care of. Um, can you explain the full title of vip 4040 like specifically the 40 reference so uh jay-z is um mr sean carter is a very 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 like inspirational person for me when right. it comes to just a business mind yeah like don't give up no matter what keep going like and the one day i i feel like they're not doing residencies yet, but you know, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like that. That's yeah. my vibe. Like, That's half the battle. I, I feel like one day this song will get a video shot at 4040. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're gonna be dressed all nice. And we're gonna have a, a background singers the same way that they did that. Hey, y'all, we're gonna do that at 4040. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be dark. Theirs was all bright and right. green and pretty. I want it to be dark. Yeah. You know? I'm in VIP. I'm not lit, but I want you right. to think I am. Yeah. That's why in the background I'm what? <laughs> That's all of those was recorded separately. Like oh, wow. they 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 didn't have each other in mind. Like like it was it was a different vibe of I don't know if I'm even gonna keep this on the song type thing. Like I'm gonna just do this because my heart wants me to do it, but I don't know if I want the world to hear this part of me. Mm. Like me being that animated yeah. like that on a song, I didn't want to do that. Right. Like, well, I did, but I didn't want. 
I didn't want to perform it. Okay. But this song held my heart. Yeah. Like, I'd have a few songs like that that I just deleted, but this one, I was like, Yo, and especially how fast I was rapping. Like, yeah, yeah, come yeah. on, degrade. Like, when I'm proud of myself, that's a rare thing. Mm. And on this whole project, um, the the ones that I freestyled, those are the ones where I was proud of myself. I was like, yeah, I was like, look at you, look at your brain, like, look at look at what you're doing. Like this song, the like when I do the Miller bitter beer ping pong guy might like. I don't drink beer, so when I yeah. drink it, yeah. you feel me? Like I'm giving them an example. Like it was I'm, weird hearing you say beer. Come on. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> it's always people, and it's, especially in the south, it's always somebody trying to hand you a beer. Like what? Yeah, H- beer and tea. It's like that's the only thing they drink. <laughs> beer and tea. Like what? I'm learning. It's interesting. Oh, uh, but but uh, the beat and the vibe. It, it, okay, so I'm. A, I don't know if you agree with this. It kind of reminds me of like a Earl Sweatshirt kind of vibe. Mm, uh, it's that that eerie I know kind who of he feeling. Is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then the vocal layering and the storytelling you portray to me was actually more kind of reminiscent of like Kendrick Lamar, mm. like swimming pools or like some of the tracks where he il- illustrates like that inner voice. Yeah, uh, I've had I've had a few people like uh, message me. Shout out to my homie Brizo. Brizo was like, yo. This some Kendrick shit. Yeah, where said, where really? you like you know it's an inner yeah, voice like having I, a conversation. I, I allowed my subconscious to hop on. Yeah, that, you know. Yeah, like. and you and you hear it. It just it really gives it this cool intricacy that you don't expect from um, from a song about parting it up in VIP, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's another track that I think, yeah, like you said, the, the visual video would be really dope for, be, just because it's so trippy. Uh, so where did you grab the inspiration for this track? For were you actually parting it up in VIP, or um, what, what what happened with that? Uh, no, this was another, I was sauced in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it sounds uh, like. Yeah, I had um, paid a bunch of money for some beats. Um, and it was those, you pay this much money because somebody in you believes. So you better do this song. And this was the first song that I worked on, which is why I put it at the end. Yeah. Like at the beginning of my trip, this was the first one that I worked on. And it gave me that confidence, that smile, that hell yeah, you heard that. That's a that's why I say this is a manifestation mm-hmm. song. Because yeah. I tell everybody, anytime I freestyle and y'all go and listen to my songs and then that stuff happened, you're welcome. Like I uh when I go listen to Duchess No Bundles, like I literally said that I'm gonna get a house that's not far from the water and when you walk 10 steps right from my house there's a giant lake that's wild and i said i'm gonna be so far that the people can't see me and my house is on a hill that's wild what <laughs> and it just came to you and, and no that was a freestyle i don't never know the song until it's done yeah right? yeah <laughs> so when i did this one i i just wanted to let my my brain free but i i you know how you tell yourself like no restrictions that's kind of how i i wanted to do myself like be as weird as you want to be. Yeah. I'm the weirder, Mike. That's why I was like, yeah. cheers cheers to my wife, cheers to my life. Yeah. Like, they know I'm the weirder, Mike. Good, mm-hmm. good, good, God. <laughs> like, I would have never done that. But mm-hmm. you have to, Degrade. Yeah. Like, you have to do what makes you happy. And that song made me happy. Yeah. So I was like, if you delete this, you should be, you know, you don't need to do music, you know. And when I played it for Jasmine, she was like, wow you've never done a song like this yeah and, and i'm thinking she was finna say like oh heck no you know the, and i was like so what does that mean she's like this is good you should do more songs like this yeah the next day she was humming it i said it's already earworm i was like it's already in your head mm-hmm. <laughs> the eerie earworm put it at the end of the project because then when they're if they're yep. looking for it you know they gotta hear other stuff that's gonna catch their ears mm-hmm. and boom uh, when i when we were done with it I, I I was like, people are gonna be like, how am I supposed to come after that? And how you come <laughs> after that with track fifteen, the final track on the album, we slow it down all the way, it's all the way. It's a bonus track. It's a bonus. Oh, uh, the bonus track. Okay, so America's nephew ends with a love song, mm-hmm. and not just any love song. Oh no, it's an acoustic interpolation. Oh, I like that word. <laughs> I love that word. Uh, by a song by actually one of my favorite artists. T Pain Shoddy. Come on. Him and him implies. You gotta make sure. And plies and let plies. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> came on TP. Yeah. Uh and it features an artist named Shanae. Shanae. Yeah.
uh, who has a really smooth R and B voice. I love her voice. She was on that uh, the Netflix show Sing On. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was I was gonna ask I was gonna ask about her because she was, uh, I tried to look on her Spotify and yeah it, she's you on Apple it. Yeah. Music. Yeah. Oh, okay. She has a few songs out. Uh, shout out to her. Shout out to Tavi because you know um, Tavi's uh, uh, Tavish is the reason why me and her linked. She's like, hey, I know this artist. She's in North Hollywood. Oh wow! Like you should work with her. Um, you know she she is a very good musician and you're a songwriter and you know why not and i was like heck yeah i'm gonna be out there anyway working on some stuff so uh will she be free around this time she's like yep i already booked it so just go ahead and i was like oh you're amazing like <laughs> i get there tavish is already there like she is ready like we didn't take long we probably listened to a few instrumentals and the the song happened you I think that's literally how it happened. You, you, if words come out, yes, within eight seconds of me hearing this song and words come out, I know. Yeah, like, yeah, this is it, bro. This is it's time. Like, yeah. And I told her like, hey, I'm going to Vegas, uh, and I'm gonna have an engineer that's gonna mix and master all this. So if you wanna uh, work on this while I'm out here, we can have a song done by the time we leave. We spent the first day listening to instrumentals and writing then uh i recorded a demo like to let her hear like how i w you know wanted it arranged mm -hmm. and i think i came back two days later like we were not playing no games i came back two days later i think i was flying out like the next day oh wow came back two days later we recorded it we, were, on a there. Deadline. we were we were there for like 11 hours oh wow. and we got the arrangement down and we had only written i think half of it and we're just singing and we're, you know how you, you get so hungry that you don't really want to eat yeah like, oh for sure we were at that point yeah you're past we it. started eating fruit and we're just like i got an idea and i was like what song made you always feel good like when yeah you heard it? yeah and we thought of the alicia keys diary okay yeah and how they went back and forth yeah and i was like what if we do that what if we, you know, even though I'm not your name, I'm not your name, but it's because you mine. And I was like, but we can't do it the same. You yeah. Know, the whole way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so as she's singing, she was like, if if you move your hand while you're while I'm singing, I'll follow your hand. And I was like, I have to work with her again. I conduct. And I, that's my life. I've yeah. always wanted to conduct the choir. <laughs> when we do this, when we do this and... um uh I, I don't remember which one of the songs that i've added a new uh tweet to for when i'll be playing it in the car i, mm -hmm. I know the live version of it we're gonna right. choir mm -hmm. like it's that kind of epic like mm -hmm. so when she does the even though and then i move my hand up fast and she went even though mm -hmm. i was like yes yeah we are about to she does hers then i do like six and then she comes back and like we didn't try to like record all the way to the end it was a just feed off of what each other is doing mm -hmm. mimic what they're doing if you know how uh the, the copy paste if i sing a run you got to sing that yeah, run yeah, like yeah. that mm -hmm. we were trying to do that and it didn't take many takes and it happened so flawlessly i was like i was like so when people hear it you know, T Pain was saying, uh, even though I'm not your man, even though you're not my man, mm -hmm. but you feel me? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Trizzy, you feel me? Uh, like, um, w when we when I got to the part, I was like, uh, tell tell make them feel it. You know, you you got to tell it to them in a way that they they're gonna how they singing it. Mm. Don't sing it how you're recording it singing how you will be singing it if it was playing mm. and that's when we freaked the end of the song and i knew yeah i said i don't have no songs that fit like this yeah but i'm gonna end the project with and this. that was my <laughs> let it into my last question what was the inspiration for ending the album with a ballad and a love song to show people that the next project soul untrapped is going to have more singing and that from did we just on, did we just get the name of the project oh <laughs> you lucky exclusively lucky. on yeah. bars yeah on bars man y 
y'all so lucky. It's because y'all the B side. That's what it is. If it was another <laughs> side and it wasn't the B side, you feel me? Not them fuckers on the Come A on, side. Man, we only want the B side. And if you ain't messing with the B side, you're on the wrong side. You feel me? You heard it from Big Money Nova guy. That's a clip right there. Uh, uh, but we knew, like, we knew. See, it's that's all, everybody in me. Uh, <laughs> All of us. Yeah, like all the entities that dwell within me said that the next project will be Soul Untrapped and America's Nephew was showing you what I feel y the world wanted to hear from me. Mm -hmm. Soul Untrapped. I, yeah, America's Nephew it's, had, yeah. it sprinkled a little of oh, me. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the, all the tracks that shocked you, mm -hmm. that that's me. Yeah. And Soul Untrapped got a lot of that. I got some EDM. I got some, I got some screaming songs like... Like, aren't you glad you grew is a song that's so like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, y y yeah, I, I, uh, we're going to be at some festivals. Like, we we definitely, the way it feels, we, we definitely going to have people doing a lot of remixes to this. Yeah. And it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of beat drops. Like, <laughs> like and then they, it's going to go from that to something like what you just hear. And they're going to yeah. be like, wait, what? Yeah, I want y'all to fall in love with music and listen to all genres mm -hmm. at once. You don't have to think that you're just going to get. Like when people meet me and they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a musician. And the first thing they'll say is, oh, are you a rapper? Mm -hmm. Even though I would be considered a rapper to make them feel weird, I go, no. <laughs> I'm a singer. And they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I can do that too. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a singer. I'm an R&B singer and I'm a poet. And I was like, and I rap sometimes. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, you know, they're actually artists that do stuff. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm very excited for your next project, but I think that you have a very cohesive project that mm. just dropped this week. Yes. So go out there and stream it. It's available on all streaming platforms, America's Nephew. And yeah. you should be very proud. It's been a long time coming, and yeah. I'm, I'm so stoked for this project and for I you and for all your blessings in the future. Yeah. Um, do you have anything that you want to promote? Anything upcoming that you'd like to put people onto? Um, so I have this uh, show about to drop uh, called Meditate with Great that I have to get you on. Okay. Definitely, it's where I I'm I'm you know talking to all of the people who I feel the world needs to get to know a little better, all while meditating with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking questions that folks ain't never asked them. I'm diving deep. I'm you know I'm trying to. I'm trying to see, you know, where you are now opposed to where you used to be and where you're trying to get like mm -hmm. that. It, the, and, and, and I was going live for a while meditating with people, but it kind of got a little distracting. So mm -hmm. I was like, let me pull it away from there, mm -hmm. you know, and make it more, you know, in tune. Uh, I don't I don't I can't say yet. Uh, it just a major network will be uh, featuring one of my Christmas songs soon. Coming up, mm -hmm. uh, so y'all be looking out for that. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, what do we have coming up? Hmm. Oh, I have some mu some music videos dropping that will be uh, shot by Trizzy and me and my wife. And uh, what's so lit is you guys have to pay attention to the subliminals <laughs> because we will be like hiding you know special gifts and qr codes and shit that's going to be leading mm. people to gifts in the video Ooh. so you know like I, I want folks to you know that aug that augmented reality with the art like i i'm I, i'm an abstract painter so mm -hmm. I, I i started working with uh these people uh they reached out to me to um put my art in their gallery but they want me to make all of my art like come alive wow like, and I'm like, this is so lit. Like, yeah. Because I, I, a lot of my one-liners, their faces, you can't tell because I do them in white or I do them in silver. And they want people to be able to um, come into a whole experience of the art. Because my I have explanations to all of my art. Mm -hmm. So they want them to be able to get that explanation without me being there. Like the painting will tell them, like, you know, the story. Oh, wow. That, that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty lit. That's sick. So, yeah, we're we got we got a lot uh coming up. I'm finna have uh my wife she teaching pole classes and all this, but mm -hmm. I'm finna be huh, doing my best to, 
you know, uh, what do you call it, work that into the shows. Okay, uh, okay. We want to be able to make it, I want to seduce the people a little bit. Yeah. Because now that I, I'm, I'm putting out this project, I want my next few projects to be more love, music more, you know, seductive, more diving mm-hmm. deep in, in a sweet way. You know, everybody miss Evanescence, you know. Man, can I was just thinking about if, them the other day. Can you imagine if Evanescence did R and B music? You know? I was just they were they're supposed to play at SoFi Stadium. I saw I was like, Damn, you, that, like, that, that was important. Yeah. Like <laughs> they are very pivotal to a lot of people's careers. Y'all yeah. just don't know that. Like even if you don't think you listen to them, you listen you feel to them. Me? You, if it comes on, you're gonna be like, Ooh, You know don't it. Lie. Don't lie. It's gonna give you them chills, <laughs> you know it. Don't don't lie. You're right, don't lie. Like, <laughs> like I, I I want to incor- I want people to fall like I said earlier. I want people to fall in love with music again. And it's I guess it's a necessity that I go on tour. So I've been hearing that. Oh, constantly. gosh. Oh, rats. <sighs> yeah. Like, oh, I'm so <laughs> darn it. <laughs> what uh, are you going to do? Well, thank you, Big Money Nova God, a.k.a. Yasir DeGreat, for yes. joining us today. Congratulations on the new album, and thank you for coming through today. Uh, yeah. Tell everyone where they can find you on your socials. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Nova God N O V A G A W D, uh, and you know, just know that hey, I'm I have a website called uh, www r eighth dimension, and you know r or our our yeah our. yeah you're right o u r eighth <laughs> dimension uh, spelled out or with y- the eight you feel me eight <laughs> T-H. Make sure you, you lead people what? to the right place. O U R A T H T H dimension is spelled correctly, uh, and you know you 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 can uh, find us there for like your holistic. You know, I, I take people on their spiritual journeys, and you know I'm trying to help people get rid of that doubt and anxiety that's like stopping them from their goals, goal goals. You know, uh, you can find me. Uh, on YouTube under Big Money Nova Got Two. Make sure y'all subscribe, and uh, you can find me on the B side. That's right. Yeah. Uh, thank you again so much for coming out. I'm so happy that this project is finally here, and yes. so proud of you, and excited for what's to come. Right. Can I do a shout out? Okay. Yeah, please. I want to shout out to my my nieces and nephews, uh, Junie, Kasia, the biggest unknown, Kanaya, Caleb, uh, my son Kanaya, my wife. My mom, my sisters, my brother, like everybody. You know, I love y'all. I appreciate uh, everybody. Ashley, Jay Silva, this is this is big. Like, I appreciate this. Uh, I'm excited. It's up from here, bro. It is. So we like to end the show with three singles of the week from other independent artists that we think that you should check out. So let's go ahead and check out those singles right now. Singles of the week. Look. I ain't a stranger to overcoming a struggle Mind over muscle, make moves, hustle God on his truth, that's the way stew bubbles Smack a whack cat, punch a bitch at the most knuckle Ready and willing, able with skill The baby face amongst the stable of hills The fable is real, that's right, best believe what you heard Renegade is supreme and superb Meditate with the greenest of earth To make my mind levitate, ten feet from the earth Heed the words I know you're watching me I'm always on your mind So all this fucking back and forth is such a waste of time The secret, let me know you'll never drop a dime Yeah, I know you're watching me I'm always on your mind So all this fucking back and forth is such a waste of time The secret, let me know you'll never drop a dime Yeah, not trying to make my summer high So you should leave me alone I know just what to do with it. Call me that SJ, Corvette, Corvette. Gonna make the place through that butterfly fat. Put it on me, girl, try your best. It's a meeting inside your bed. Let's do it, let's get the business. Give you the business, I'ma eat it. I'm all inside it, treat it like Denny's. On the couch with it in your mouth, like it's a dinner. I ain't begging for it, I ain't asked for it, I just get it. I'ma take my strap off safety. Now she got me flowy, cause she know I get it right. I'm a move. First I make it sad, then I die. That concludes like a our show for today. Make sure you tune in every other week for reviews and catch all the newest independent music hitting the scene. Make sure you stream America's Nephew on all streaming platforms. 
Catch me, what's up, Ash, at what's up, Ash on Instagram. And there are no upcoming events. And uh, thank you for tuning into this premiere of Bars, B-Side album review show. I'm your host, Ash, and we'll see you next time.